in the Department of Cognitive Robotics here at the DLR in Oberpfaffenhofen, um, along about seven to eight years, we have developed a lot of technology and competence to make life of upper limb amputees better. We're now going to show you how the prosthetic setup works for intact subjects, and this is um, almost like a simulation of our uh, test persons. After a calibration phase which lasted about 30 seconds, I can control the hand upon my own will. I mean that I contract my own muscles and the hand responds exactly as it is supposed to be. Right now we can either have a cylindrical or power grasp or we can stretch the index finger. And the remarkable part here is that this will remain completely stable no matter how I move or what objects I lift. So what I can do here, for instance, is I can grab a bottle or a jar with something in it, place it somewhere else, then re-grab it this way, and then totally stably take the lid off. And then if I need it, I can pour what's in the jar somewhere else. Specifically, in the prosthetics laboratory, one can design, apply, test, and check the functional recovery of algorithms designed for upper limb amputees. As an example, we have here a socket which we have built specifically for one of our test persons. As you can see, it consists of a carbon fiber socket with eight EMG sensors. On top of that, we have one of the best hand prostheses in the world. This actually has six motors that we can control in current. That means in torque independently. The connection between the socket and the hand is completely standard. The key strong points of this laboratory are in the first place that we have connections with hospitals and with clinics so that we can have a specific socket built for any test person. The second feature is I would say that we employ interactive machine learning for the control. That means that the person who is wearing the prosthesis is able to teach the prosthesis what is best to accomplish the task she is required to. At the same time, since we employ machine learning, the prosthesis is adapting to the signals that the person is producing. The third key point is, I would say, the lab itself, which consists of a complete daily living activities setup. So we have objects, we have tables, we have uh, a shelf in which things can be reached on the top shelf or on the bottom shelf, and we have quite a lot of space. That means that we can test the reliability of the control system in real daily life conditions. It is actually well known in the community that reliability still is a problem whatever kind of machine learning based control scientists are using. By going ahead along this path, we hope to be able to radically improve this situation in the near to midterm future. Mm -hmm.